someone actually asked in the chat, how do I learn Unity? Which is kind of a broad question because Unity is just a tool. Like it'd be like asking, you know, how do I learn Photoshop? Well, why did you even download Photoshop? What are you trying to do with it? Um, and so uh, the answer to that question is how do you learn Unity? You use it regularly and you use it to do things that you're trying to accomplish. Uh, and in that, you're going to have to Google things and read the documentation. And that's how you're going to learn. Um, so, yeah. And oh, I think we, we've we harped on this a lot. Work on small projects. And to kind of bring it full circle to what we talked about earlier in the stream, pick a, pick a small project, write a plan for it, come up with some sort of design plan or whatever the case may be, get some reference material, collect all that up. Put it somewhere that makes sense to you, whether it be maybe a Kanban board or maybe you need to print them out and put them on your desk and spread it out. Once you have all those pieces, build a game, start to finish, and repeat and re you know rinse and repeat. I think that is a, the most one of probably the most effective ways that you can learn Unity quickly. Mm -hmm. And in the spirit of a conversation I had earlier today, uh, if you're completely new to Unity and you want to learn how to make it, like anything really. Um, I would say start with someone like Blackthorn Prod. Their YouTube channel is great. Uh, they've got a course on Udemy, and they will show you how to make a game. You'll just basically follow along. Um, yeah. You'll start with a plan of a game. You'll make it. It'll functionally be playable. You'll have various powers and mechanics and things, and that'll get you in. That that'll get your foot in the door. And then from there, you can start customizing that project. And again, don't go ham and start making other things. Take the project you've just made and start adding new abilities to it and um, make new art for it and just really expand on what you've got, add new mechanics. And then once you're comfortable with that, start another small project and do two or three of those and then jump into a bigger one after that. Actually, yeah, you know, I think that's a good point too. Get one of those Udemy courses that has a game start to finish. I would suggest, and this is just something that I, I remember I used to do this in college, um, I should still do it today. Um, go through the whole tutorial, the whole course. You know, it takes hours, of course. Finish the game and then try to recreate that game from scratch by yourself. See how far you can get before you have to reference the course again. Um, I think that's a, I think that's a pretty solid way um, to learn. I mean, it's just one way that I, I had employed before. And uh, yeah, you're going to get to a point where you... You know, you watch a video and you think, oh, I understand the concept now. But then when you actually have to put it into practice, even if you've already done it, um, when you're following along with the tutorial, I think it's easy to take for granted that you're just following along. And even though you're typing out the things, it's not coming out of your own head. When you actually have to watch a tutorial and then say, okay, I'm going to do what I just learned from scratch, you know, you're going to find that you don't really own the concept yet. Um, and the way to own the concept is to try to do it until you until you can do it without watching uh, the tutorial or the course or whatever. So I think that's a pretty valuable approach too. Mm -hmm. And it also just comes down to like you want to enjoy it, right? You want a sense of ownership of your project. You want to customize it and make it something that, that you personally enjoy making. So there's a lot of, like, like we said, there's a lot of work in it. So you could follow along with the course and you now at the end of a course functionally know how to make levels and how to make a playable character and how to do a health system. You now could have to take. You could take another month learning how to make engaging levels. You could take another two months and learning how to do uh, juicing for your game, add really interesting visuals and sound effects. And um, if you're doing your own art, you could then take another month and learn how to do um, squash and stretch animations so that your animations feel more engaging. Um, there's a load of different things you could take. So. I, I just I really don't recommend people who are out rushing out to make a giant game or even just rushing to make multiple games like mm. either do the game jam approach and make tons of throwaway projects, mm. which is a great way to learn or pick one project and learn multiple facets of that particular kind of project. And that's also a great way to learn. But one, as Charles said, do stuff like don't the, one of the worst things you can do. And this is as someone who's done that for years is um, if you just watch tutorials and then just move on. You won't learn anything. Watching a tutorial is just, you know, it's it's like watching a random TV show. You're, it's, it's, you'll, you'll obtain half the information. If you <laughs> watch a tutorial, I'm, my personal, the way I approach it is I watch a tutorial while I'm eating breakfast or something. Then I'll go to work. And then after work, I'll let that sort of simmer in the back of my head. And then I'll follow along with the tutorial again after I'm finished work. And that will mean I've I've got this sort of previous knowledge of what to expect with the course. So when I start the second time, I feel a lot more... 
uh, empowered as I go along. And it means I'm not going to stop and pause the videos as much. But it means by the end of it, I've, I've literally done it myself. Um, and a personal challenge I've learned that I like is I like to rename the variables and things from the courses I follow just so that I force myself to know what the variables do. Yeah. I don't just write the code down because you can turn your brain off if you do that. You just follow along with the course and um, you don't even have to engage at what you're writing. <laughs> you're just basically cloning code. But if you've changed the methods and variable names, you have to sort of convert it, which forces you to engage. Good idea. Listen.